I was in Minot, North Dakota, uh, partners in a used car and truck business. Money, girlfriends, cars, the whole uh, enchilada. When I got this uh, phone call from New York. I got a letter from a, a friend of mine at TWA, called this number and asked for Swifty, just like that. So what the hell, I called the number. Livingston, where the hell are you? We've been waiting a week for you. I said, waiting for me, huh? Yeah, we need you right away. I said I'd wear a flying jacket, so a leather jacket, so they would recognize me. And they said to bring a log book of proof that I was a pilot. The meeting at a hotel on 57th Street in New York, the Henry Hudson Hotel, served great martinis. A fellow who identified himself as Steve Schwartz, apprising me of the the fact that Israel was going to declare itself a state, that they were going to be attacked by at least five Arab armies, and they had no way to defend themselves, except that they had purchased some airplanes, but they had no one to fly them. And would I be in a position to help? The idea that Jews were going to fight, I found exciting. It's about time. It wasn't like a newspaper ad joined the Haganah. It was illegal, of course. He said, look, I know there's going to be a war there, and I'm, I'm a fighter pilot, and I want to go there. And I had just made up my mind that nothing was going to stop me. And I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do this. The alternative is too hard for me to envision the possibility of what the Arabs could have done. And they talked about the fact that what Hitler did will be nothing compared to what we're going to do. You know, you're talking about 600,000 Jews and 50 million Arabs surrounding them. I didn't see how they could possibly survive. The Arab countries had established air forces. We had almost nothing. Four junk airplanes. Different propeller, different engines from uh, spare parts that the German Air Force left behind in Czechoslovakia. I remember sitting in the cockpit of my ME-109 wearing a German uniform, a German helmet, German parachute. What's a nice Jewish boy from St. Paul doing in a place like this? <laughs> the irony of it did not escape any of us. The Arabs had squadrons, they had planes, they had tanks, they had guns, they had everything. Except that will to win that the Israelis had, that they had to win. He says, look, six miles from where we're standing now at the airbase is the whole Egyptian army of about 10,000 men, about 500 vehicles, tanks, trucks, and tankers, and we have nothing to stop them. I said, well, tomorrow I was gonna go. He says, if you don't go now, they'll be in Tel Aviv in the morning and there's no Israel. These airplanes had never been test flown. They were assembled in the hangar. And they just started up, taxed out, and attacked the Egyptian army coming up the coast. I looked back, and I saw the land of Israel. I looked there. 
I saw the enemy that came to destroy us. I just did a quick Shmaiz Royal, even though I'm not religious. Turn the airplane upside down because the dive bomb, the steeper the dive, the more accurate is the hit. I told Lou, this is about the dumbest thing that I'd ever heard of, and I would never have done it, but they stopped the Egyptians cold. I felt more at home in Israel than I did in the United States. I felt this is my home. As a Jew, I now felt proud of being Jewish. I was born to be here on that moment of history to contribute to Israel's survival. I had done something good for once. We built an Air Force. We started an Air Force. If you wrote the history of the Jewish people a thousand years from now, there are two things that I can tell you will be in it. Um, one is the Holocaust, one is the birth of the State of Israel. The, the people who went to Israel and participated in this, in this effort were you know, really part of two of the most significant, incredible, devastating, tragic, uh, euphoric episodes in Jewish history, I, I think for all time. Shortly before I left, I happened to be in Tel Aviv when they were bringing in refugees from the death camps in Europe. I remember them getting down on their hands and knees and kissing the ground. I knew then and there that was the reason that I came.